Hytale has two main factions we'll get to meet at the start of the game, if we choose to spawn in Zone 1 that is. These are the Quebex and the Trox. They both inhabit the Emerald Grove, and for the longest time we've had hints that these two races aren't the biggest fans of one another. Quebex, for instance, have been shown to decorate their armor with the teeth of Trox. Whilst we know Trox intentionally capture these seemingly peaceful Quebec creatures for some nefarious purpose yet to be determined. But it seems like for the last year, the community has have taken and ran with this idea that Trox consume these creatures. The meme of burning Quebex has been very prominent recently as well, but is that the truth? Given what we know, can we figure out this animosity? Can we find an answer to the question, why are Trox capturing Quebex? Welcome back to Quebec Connor. My name is Connor, and today on Hightail Theory Talk, we establish the Trox motives, culture, and reasoning for attack. Why are these green guys so darn angry all the time? And what do they want with our precious wooden friends? Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get into the video. Now, if you've been keeping up with the series, then you'll know that we've covered many aspects of Hightail's lore so far, and that's including the Quebecs themselves. At the end of that video, we actually deduced that the Quebec could be magical, potentially holding some form of sound-related ability or power. And today, we're going to look at their natural enemy, Arch Nemesis, the Trox. Despite both factions residing in Zone 1, we have to remember that zones are more like climate groups. Within each zone are many, many biomes with varying terrain types and foliage. This means that while Zone 1 is unified in the element it represents and general geography, races and animals may differ drastically depending on their habitat. Quebecs are known to live near riverlands, woodlands, and swampy marshes. We've seen a Quebec settlement not far from a wild fence stalker, and this environment seems to suit their needs relatively well. Lots of river water for drinking, thick trunks, and high treetops for defense and housing. Trox, however, they're a bit more warrior-esque. Inspired by a combination of trolls and orcs, preferring open fields and grassy plains. Their camps are sometimes seen bordering woodlands, the likes of which they probably use to construct their overbearing wooden walls and log blockades. This type of environment reflects the race of Trox. They are hunters at heart, sometimes scavenging for food and resources. They travel, patrol, and scout a lot, so flatland is important to them. It also helps them see oncoming attacks from a far distance, surveying the landscape from atop the watchtowers. Trox eat meat too. In fact, while we don't have a detailed rundown of their dietary requirements, we've seen them at the very least chomp down on a leg of something meaty, and they regularly set up carrot traps, most likely for the pesky rabbits and jackalope we've seen hopping through the same zone's farmyards. So, rabbit meat. They're carnivores. There's very little evidence, in fact, of any type of herb consumption. I doubt a vegan trork would be accepted amongst their ranks. So it begs the question, why do people assume that Trox want to eat the Quebex? We know Quebecs have little rabbit pets in concept. Could Trox be luring the rabbits there as a way to get at these innocent critters? Now, I'm partial to a meme or two, but so many people have tweeted me, either jokingly or semi-seriously claiming they're going to try and eat a Quebec. We'll get onto the burning part later, but for now, eating? Just why eating? First off, wood. Quebecs are made of literal wood, so you'd be chewing down on splinters and log chips. Not a very appetizing meal. There's also no meat in a tree. In fact, that would surely be closer to a plant than any form of meat. So what's the deal? Why do Trox want to capture these guys so darn much? We see it claimed so in the Edge article, posed to us as a potential quest for when you approach a Trox camp. Save a peaceful Quebec. To understand this hatred towards, um, bark, let's look a bit deeper into their culture and architecture. Trox may be a bit dull with their hulkish bodies and drool dripping from their chin, but these creatures are clearly smart enough to form groups, hierarchies, we've seen numerous ranks such as warrior, ranger, hunter, scout, and even a chieftain, suggesting a chain of command. These Trox are smart enough to follow orders, set traps, and build armor and weaponry to fight. Some Trox may even possess a higher level of intelligence, such as the shaman or chieftain members. Additionally, the domestication of seemingly vicious black wolves 
wolves is yet another testament to their ability to think. And despite their seemingly always angered nature, when their temper dies down, they are calm, preferring the company of one another rather than traveling alone. They are tribal, with totem poles decorating the camp's features. Twisted carved bone act perhaps as a deterrent, being hung high atop the camp for all to see. Maybe this could be more suggestive of their beliefs, a tradition of theirs. Perhaps they too have a religion, a god. We even see that Trorks have their own language in scripted runes, so maybe we'll get a closer look at this if we were to somehow increase our reputation with them, or if they were to ever become a playable race. The issue is, Trorks are defensive. We've seen them chasing off players or getting angry whenever they approach. Rangers high up on their posts may even hurl a spear at an approaching bird, so it's safe to say a human is going to get the full extent of the camp's power when nearby. But there's one thing I have noticed. Remember when we said that Trorks often build in open fields? It seems to me that most camps are completely landlocked. There's few I ever see near water. The devs of this game definitely take this stuff into consideration too. The fact that the Quebecs are surrounded by the stuff is no coincidence. It shows they require it as a source of energy and could even use it as a defense. But not only that, the fact that they carve housing from living trees, their use of firefly lanterns shows the Quebecs affinity for innovation, preferring to preserve nature. We see their culture and character reflect in their surroundings and habitat. Likewise, when it comes to the Trorks, they are much more industrial, and so this is reflected in their camps, preferring giant bonfires, bone carvings, their structures laced with fiery torches, processed wooden walls, and the clash of steel. There's no sign of preservation here. It's the polar opposite to the Quebecs, cold, hard, and armored. Fun fact, we've never seen the Trorks show any allegiance to Gaia, the goddess of light, mother nature if you will, while Quebecs have totems and carvings all over worshipping her. Another subtle detail and a nice contrast. Trorks do seem to really love fires too. Whether that's just to keep warm or something darker, we don't know. However, most of their camps being landlocked, this fear of water I mentioned, is actually backed up by the clip of a Trork being bothered by the rain. Now, sure, yeah, you could argue that this would bother any creature, but that, combined with the fact that no matter which camp we see, there's always some sort of fire or torch, plus there usually being no sign of water in sight when Trorks are around, it just says something to me, at the very least. Maybe Trorks can't swim. That could be something that helps you escape them in battle. Besides, there's got to be a reason all these Trorks don't just storm the Quebec settlements and burn them all down instantly, right? Maybe it has something to do with the water. The fact that the Quebec's entire habitat is surrounded by it. Going back to the Trork camps for a moment, we do see that they use wood in almost every aspect of their society. Whether it's for tools and weapons, creating smaller scouting outposts, or fortifying their camps, there's clearly a demand for the resource. So it begs the question, why would they need the Quebecs? If their camps are near giant forests, they have access and more than enough brain cells to tame animals and form a hierarchy, so why then can't they just cut down the trees? Maybe that's what they are doing, just chopping down wood and this is all conjecture. Maybe the memes are right and Quebecs are literally just fuel for their fire. But maybe the Quebecs have a special property, something that makes harvesting or burning their wood more worthwhile. Perhaps Quebec wood creates stronger weapons, better defenses, burns hotter, or maybe there's an aspect of magic in there. We all know the cliche of an antagonist kidnapping some character or set of creatures to harness their energy or power. So maybe that's what the Trork shamans are doing to the Quebecs in this case, drawing out that magical earthly Gaian energy for some darker purpose perhaps even strengthening themselves. It's a pretty dark story for an already tragic race, but there you have it folks. I guess it still begs the question, why would the Trorks be doing this? Are they naturally evil or is someone swaying them, disrupting their tribes? Are the Trorks even originally from Zone 1? Or are they more like settlers, invaders, perhaps traveling from distant zones torn asunder by Varen, simply seeking refuge? Maybe they originated in Zone 4, and that's why they like fire so much. The Shaman Staff certainly looks, um, fiery to say the least. And last but not least, here's one final question I will leave you with. If Quebecs are made of wood, and if humans are scarce, if not very low in population within Hytale, as we've deduced in previous theories, then how, why, what are all of these skulls? 
dawned across their armor, decorating their weapons and beards, strung across their camps. Are these new schools? Old schools? Are they the schools of a Quebec? Are they humans? And when, where were they killed? This totally undermines our theory that there are no humans present in Orbis anymore. Or maybe perhaps Trox really like killing the undead humans and collecting the skulls as trophies. Or maybe, maybe, maybe there's an even deeper story to be unraveled. Alas, it remains to be seen. But thanks for watching this episode of Hightail Theory Talk. You can get 50k merch at quiqui.com, enter the creative writing and art competitions in our Discord linked below. Thanks to the channel members for their support. Continue smiling, thank you for liking, subscribing, and thanks as always for watching Quebec Corner. Stay safe and keep free.